will be on high alert for a potential, a potential major reversal in the stock markets. And then, of course, we'll examine the charts. Hello, everyone. Alessio Rastani shares an exclusive video of explaining what markets are about to do in the near term, considering the expectations of the Fed rates cut. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin is likely to underperform the stock market on a risk-adjusted basis in 2024, while gold may come out ahead, says Bloomberg's senior commodity strategist Mike McGlone. Despite the bullish narrative around the recent spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund ETF, approval and the upcoming Bitcoin halving, macroeconomic factors may prevent the largest cryptocurrency from reaching new all-time highs in 2024. In particular, McGlone believes market expectations that the Fed will cut interest rates, which usually has a boosting effect on risk on assets like Bitcoin, are largely misplaced. The Fed will not ease with the ease it has in the past because of inflation it created with easing too much, he pointed out in an exclusive Cointelegraph interview. McGlone expects the U.S. economy to finally enter a recession this year, which should drive the stock market down. Bitcoin, as a leading indicator for risk assets, is likely to suffer in such an environment. When the stock market and beta goes down, Bitcoin goes down more, McClone said. According to the analyst, gold and long treasury bonds will likely be the assets that will come out ahead in this environment. Now, in this particular video, I want to revisit this important chart that I showed you over a year ago in December of 2022. And I want to explain to you what this chart potentially means for 2024, especially for the stock markets. And by the way, as you know, what happens in the stock markets can also impact Bitcoin and crypto as well. So back in December of 2022, I warned that a lot of people were mistaken in thinking that because the Federal Reserve was raising rates back then, so back in late 2022, the Federal Reserve was raising rates aggressively. In fact, they continued to raise rates aggressively from 2022 to 2023. Now, here's something interesting. You may recall that in December of 2022, in a video I made back then, I warned that just because the Federal Reserve was increasing rates, that is not necessarily a negative or a bad thing for the stock markets. In fact, I said back then in December of 2022 that the stock markets could go higher despite the Federal Reserve raising rates. The first objection people had was, well, how can you say the market can have a rally when the Federal Reserve is raising rates? There's a very simple answer to that. First of all, you can see in the last several months of this year, we've had several big rallies. For example, in the spring of this year, the stock markets, the S&P went up 12% despite the Federal Reserve raising rates. In August, from June to August of this year, the stock markets rallied by just close to 20%. That was despite the Fed raising rates. I think, by the way, I think the stock market will rally ahead before the Fed pivot occurs. Again, just to repeat this point, I think the stock markets will probably rally in expectation of a Fed pivot by next year in 2023. But when the Fed pivot occurs, that's going to be too late. By the way, a lot of people were in astonishment. They were in disbelief. They could not believe or accept the idea that the stock markets could go up despite the Federal Reserve raising rates. And that is because a lot of people believe this false idea that the markets are rational, that the markets have to make common sense. But as you and I know, and I mentioned this in previous videos, the markets do not make common sense because the markets are not rational. As we know, the markets do not move based on rationality or based on Federal Reserve decisions, but actually on emotion on social mood, changes in social mood, waves of optimism, pessimism, greed, fear, anxiety, euphoria, and so on and so on. That is what really drives the markets, waves of social mood, sentiment, emotion, and irrational behavior of the market participants. The Federal Reserve just responds to the markets. So in other words, the actions of the Federal Reserve is driven by the markets, not the other way around. A lot of people mistakenly think that it's the markets that are driven by the Federal Reserve. No, it's the opposite. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, a lot of people thought at the end of 2020, in December of 2022 that the markets cannot go higher because the Federal Reserve is raising rates. And as we warned correctly, that is not the case. The markets rallied higher as we expected. And you may recall, in the video that I made in December 2022, over a year ago, I said, look, this chart is very important because what this chart indicates is the time when you should be worried about the markets is not when the Federal Reserve is raising rates, but conversely, when it's cutting rates. So it's only when the Federal Reserve begins to cut rates 
that we should be careful and be on high alert. So here are some good examples. For example, in the year 2007, uh, 2008, when the Federal Reserve began to cut rates, that is when the market then topped and started a downtrend. That is when the trouble started and that is when the market topped and began to decline severely, by the way. The same occurred in 2000, 2001. In fact, on both occasions, we can see here the markets dropped by 50%. And by the way, there was nothing the Federal Reserve or the government could do to stop the markets from dropping. By the way, there are other examples of this too. For example, in 1970s, in 1973, when the Federal Reserve cut rates, that was also when the markets dropped. The same thing happened in the late 60s and also in the year 2020. But overall, the general pattern is that it's only when the Federal Reserve begins to cut rates, when they start reducing rates after having increased them, that is when the trouble begins for the major stock markets. So perhaps you're thinking right now, well, what does this mean for the markets in 2024? I think that sometime this year, in 2024, the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates. Now we know already, as you can see from this chart, the Federal Reserve increased rates from 2022 to 2023. Then they paused rates, they kept them the same for some time. Now I think that at some point this year, probably in the second half of 2024, so I would say probably either in the summer of 2024 or September, December of 2024, basically I think at some point this year, the Federal Reserve is going to decide to cut interest rates. And guys, that is the time when that eventually happens, that is a time to be on high alert. Because as we've known from history, that is a time usually, and as we can see historically, that is a time when the stock markets usually form a top and then start a major reversal and decline. Now, I should make this very clear because I think some people who are watching this video will probably misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that just because the Federal Reserve at some point this year, maybe in the second half of this year, when they begin to cut interest rates, that necessarily the markets will have to reverse and then drop. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the action of the Federal Reserve can be used as just one important factor, one clue as to what may happen to the stock markets. Okay, so please do not think that we're just going to rely on the action of the Federal Reserve to make decisions. No, that is not the case. As you know, I'm a technicals guy. We don't rely just on fundamentals to make decisions. No, on the contrary, we look at technicals, we look at the charts, so even if the Federal Reserve decides to cut rates sometime this year, let's say in June, July or September, December of this year, that does not mean by itself that it's a bad thing for the stock markets. It does not mean that the markets have to make a reversal and then drop. As I've just said, the action of the Federal Reserve is just one factor, one clue we look at, among other things. It would be a negative factor, but it's not sufficient on its own to indicate to us that we reached a top in the markets. So we'd be looking at other important factors to determine that the markets have topped and likely starting a reversal. So we don't just rely on the action of the Federal Reserve. So personally, I'd be looking at other key factors. For example, the charts. What are the charts saying to us? Are we breaking support? Are we breaking key levels of structure? Are there any topping patterns? Things like that. Now, now, I should say, guys, as I'm making this video right now, there is as yet no sign of a top in the markets. So the stock markets can continue to go higher by the time the Federal Reserve decision to cut rates come about. And I think by that time, we'll see much higher levels in the stock market. I think the S&P potentially could go over the 4,900, over 4,950. We're probably going to see much higher levels in the stock market in this last gasp stage of the market. But in any case, once the Federal Reserve decides to cut rates sometime this year, probably in the second half of this year, then that's going to be very interesting because then we'll be in a higher alert for a potential, a potential major reversal in the stock markets. And then of course, we'll examine the charts near the time. By the way, the psychology of most people at that point in time will be different. When the Federal Reserve decides to cut rates, most people, and by the way, that includes mainstream media, most mainstream media and most people out there will think mistakenly that that's a good thing for the markets because they've been taught, again, mistakenly, that when the Federal Reserve begins to cut rates, that's a positive thing, it's a good thing, a bullish thing for the markets. No, guys, as you and I know, by that time, it's too late. By the time the Federal Reserve decides to cut rates sometime this year, the stock market has already made its move. So it's too late by then. By the way, this is exactly what I warned would happen over a year ago in December 2022. Here's a clip. Before the Federal Reserve pivots, in other words, before they decide to cut rates, the stock market usually rises and rallies right before a Fed pivot. By the time the Federal Reserve pivots and then starts cutting rates, the market usually rallies before that event, before that actually happens. All right, guys, as you heard what I said back then over a year ago, I said by the time the Federal Reserve decides to cut rates, it's too late by then. The stock market has already rallied and gone up. So that means, unfortunately, for a lot of people out there who think that when the Federal Reserve cuts rates this year, that's a good thing, it's a positive thing, the market will probably do the opposite of what they expect. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success.